Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to welcome you to the LSBU Hall. My name is Bob Hallett, and I'm here to entertain you this afternoon and to introduce the Newfoundland Arts, sorry, the Arts Newfoundland, Newfoundland and Labrador Council's Arts Awards. Welcome. As with every plan this year, we have made and remade the plans for the Arts Council Awards, Arts NL Awards, over and over again. However, we're glad that we are finally able to gather here in this space. I know for many of you, including myself, it's been a very long time since I thought sat in a theater, and I'm glad to be here today, and I'm glad to see you all here today with us. These will be six awards presented throughout the show, and though this show is about those who have truly distinguished themselves over a period of years, we would like to congratulate each and every artist who put their name forward or was nominated for one of these awards. This has been a tremendously difficult award year for all our artists who've struggled to make work and find an audience and be creative in, in, the, in the space of the dark clouds that have surrounded us. So we treasure all their creative work. And we congratulate them all for finding time and effort and imagination in this dark year. And as well, we'll be making our annual official induction to the Artist Hall of Honor, which is you know, a tremendous honor for people who've worked their whole lives in the arts in Newfoundland. And we'll also be celebrating the patron of the arts. As we know, there, without audience, there is no art. So uh, we are grateful to the patrons who step forward and work and buy and come see and, and watch and, and participate so much in the community and the cultural life of this place. Uh, one piece of housekeeping. When you come up to, uh, to accept your award or to speak, I would like you to, to move to the podium closest to wherever you're sitting. And when we leave this afternoon after this grand celebration, everybody to my left should leave through the door on the left, and everybody to my right, yes, my right, should leave to the door on the right. And that way uh, we'll minimize mingling. Please be assured that when you come to the podium, when you get down again, it'll be uh, cleaned and sanitized. And uh, my mic, I'm, I'm taking this one home with me, so there should be no... Uh, there should be no overlap or no needs to worry. Now, we're here to celebrate arts, not to listen to me talk, so let's go to it. The first award this afternoon is the Artist Achievement Award, and it recognizes a practicing artist who has made an outstanding contribution to the cultural life of Newfoundland and Labrador over a number of years. And it's my pleasure this afternoon to call upon the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Arts, and Recreation. The Newfoundland government, Newfoundland and Labrador government, made a commitment a few years ago to increase the funding of the Newfoundland and Labrador Arts Council, and we were delighted to see them follow with, through with this province and allow the artists to take some of the burden of, of constantly looking for money and instead transfer that energy to creativity. So I would like to thank, and I would like to see the Minister, Bernard, the Honorable Bernard Davis, to step up to the mic right now and present this award. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, it's a big honor for me to share a stage with uh, a member of Great Big C, for sure. That's a big honor for me. Uh, but I'm delighted to be here today to recognize outstanding achievement in the Newfoundland and Labrador arts community. First and foremost, I want to congratulate Arts NL for holding this event today. Uh, it may not look like it has in previous years, but I'm happy to be safely joining you here at this celebration, as I'm sure all of you are as well. 2020 has been a trying year, especially for those of you who earn a living in artistic creation. But today we are here to celebrate you and your accomplishments. We applaud your achievements and recognize the significant economic and social, co social contribution you make to our province. The breadth of talent in Newfoundland and Labrador knows no bounds. And together, we all play a vital role in continued success of Newfoundland and Labrador's cultural sector. That's why through Budget 2020, as Bob alluded to, our government invests an additional $1 million in funding for XNL, bringing the annual provincial investment to more than $3.9 million. <laughs> With this additional funding, XNL will not only be able to increase the ceiling on their current slate of programs, but also have the ability to create new programming, which is also fantastic. As a government, we remain committed to arts. Earlier this month, we launched the Artist Support Program to assist professional artists and musicians 
impacted by the pandemic. This new short-term program was announced as an extension to the Tourism Hospitality Support Program in Budget 2020. And I encourage those that are eligible to please apply. Ladies and gentlemen, Newfoundlanders and Labradorians are renowned for adapting and persevering through uncertain times like the ones we're currently living in. It is exciting to see artists take full advantage of visual platform or virtual platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to perform. They have brought us much comfort and joy during a much needed time for us. As we continue to move through this new normal, it is crucial that we make the extra effort to safely support our artists wherever possible. Congratulations to all those nominees for your hard work and dedication. Without further ado, I'd like to this year's Artist Achievement finalist to appear on the screen, I think, is the, if technology works perfect, it should come up there. Excellent. <laughs> Marlene Kreitz is an award-winning environmental artist and poet who works with photography, video, movement, and text. She draws on scientific and vernacular knowledge to create collaborative, site-specific works in a six-acre patch of boreal forest in Portugal Cove, where she lives. Kreitz studied visual arts at Queen's University. Her work explores the relationship between human experience, memory, language, and the land. Elected to the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts in 2001, her work has been presented in over 350 solo and group exhibitions and screenings. Kreitz has been a guest lecturer at over 200 institutions in Canada and beyond. She's taught, curated several exhibitions, and worked in artist-run centres. In addition to her numerous awards, Kreitz received the Governor General's Award in Visual and Media Arts for Lifetime Artistic Achievement in 2019. Danielle Irvine is an award-winning theatre director who's worked Canada-wide directing theatrical productions of varying sizes and types across a range of venues. She's also artistic director of Cupid's based Perchance Theatre. Irvine has worked in film and television casting for Republic of Doyle and Frontier, and she served on boards of numerous arts organizations. She's called upon frequently to adjudicate local theatre festivals and has extensive experience on arts, juries, and advisory committees. Highlights of her extensive career include six years of teaching at the National Theatre School and two seasons as an assistant director at the Stratford Theatre Festival. Irvine is the recipient of the Canada Council for the Arts John Hirsch Prize for Directing and the Eleanor and Lou Seminovich Protégé Prize under Gillian Kiley. I always want to say for the envelope, please, but I already have it. Um, the award for the Artist Achievement and I haven't sneaked a peek yet either. Daniel Irvine. Um, achievement means the result of hard work. I can honestly say that in this time, in this year, that word has become so much more poignant. Achievement. For any artist in any discipline, achieving their goal is the result of a lot of hard work. But for a theatre artist, that result comes not from one person, but from the work of a lot of people. Any goal that I've achieved in my career has come because of the support, belief, encouragement, creativity, and hard work of a lot of people. So to the artists who tread the boards and who work behind the scenes, who contribute to bringing my vision to life, to the invaluable administrative team keeping the business of art alive, to the board of directors who bring all their energy to bear on protecting and growing this vision, to the donors, sponsors, patrons, 
juries, councils, and agencies without whom there could be no work, and to the audiences whose passionate engagement infuses everything, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. It has never been more clear than now when we are so forcibly apart that theater is community. To all of you, our community, we have collectively achieved the impossible this year. We have striven and have found ways to come together to build work, to support each other, to engage with ideas and stories and be curious and be creative and achieve. And we will get through this. Be patient for the world is broad and wide. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis didn't have a particular trophy or a plaque to hand out, uh, but there's a reason. The council values creative work above all else here at the Arts Council, so instead of offering the same award every year, Arts Newfoundland issues a public call inviting visual artists and fine craft people from across the province to submit proposals for the artwork to be presented at this and every awards. So this year's artwork was created by Jennifer Young, and we've created a special video so that we can all see how the, she creates these magnificent works that each of our award winners will be able to take home today. This year's artwork was created by artist Jennifer Young, whose work primarily encompasses two mediums, oil and encaustic, She's created a series of works reflecting the geographic and topographical diversity of the province, embracing bays, ponds, valleys, and bogs. To create these works, Young began with a contour map of the area and developed each piece using the lines on the map, selecting colors to represent the season of the year to reflect the feeling in time, dimension, line, and space. Each map was created by laying down many layers of encaustic medium, painting lines for each contour and using layers to represent the spectrum of color for the season. The works were then sculpted using hand tools which expose lower layers and reveal the depth painted through the pieces. Young says her artwork allows her to express her understanding and expression of place in quite different ways. Her oil painting style is painterly and moves between brush and palette knife depending on the wind, waves, and movement of the piece. While her encaustic work is much more abstract as it flows with the heating and application of the wax. Thank you to Jennifer Young for creating these wonderful awards that we're able to give out today. Now, for the second award of the afternoon, the Patron of the Arts Award recognizes a person, business, or organization that has demonstrated an ongoing commitment to the arts in Newfoundland and Labrador through innovative community or sustained support of artistic activity. And as I said earlier, there's no, there's no art without audience. So it's my pleasure to introduce this year's winner of the Patron of the Arts Award, my friend, David Hood. This year's Patron of the Arts goes to David Hood. Hood is a retired partner at Grant Thornton in St. John's and is well known for his dedicated service to the arts. His vision and generosity paired with his professional expertise and experience has had a direct impact on the ability of arts organizations to develop and be sustained in this province. He's noted for his extraordinary volunteer work in the areas of governance, 
fund development and promotion of the arts and heritage communities of Newfoundland and Labrador. Groups he's helped include Artistic Fraud of Newfoundland, St. Michael's Print Shop, Perchance Theatre, Music NL, Garrick Theatre, the Royal Canadian Academy of Arts, and various individual artist members of Business and Arts NL. Organizations where he serves or has served as chair, executive member, or director are many and include Artistic Fraud of Newfoundland, the Bonavista Biennale, Business and the Arts Newfoundland and Labrador, Association of Heritage Industries of Newfoundland and Labrador, and the Newfoundland and Labrador Historic Trust and the Heritage Foundation. For his steadfast and enthusiastic support for culture in this province, we congratulate David Hood as the 2019 recipient of the Patron of the Arts Award. I think I should just stop there. There's nothing I can say that's, uh, that's going to uh, be any more interesting. Um, I'm thrilled to be recognized as a patron of the arts for 2020. The fact that the nominators and supporters took uh, the time and effort means a lot to me. And one of the most interesting things was actually reading the nomination materials and the, uh, and the letters of support. Absolutely awesome. Some of the authors are in the audience today. Um, but the rewards are in the work. It always amazes me to see what great things can happen when business people bring business acumen and skills to artists and arts organizations, and artists bring, bring creativity and a different way of thinking to business people as a part of the process. Everyone's better off as a result, and it's, it just amazes me how much we can learn and benefit from each other. Um, having said that, it is nice to be recognized every now and then. Um, and I also want to recognize my wife, Karen. Uh, Karen's been heavily involved and supportive of the things we do in the arts community, and a lot of it we do together. Um, so thank you very much. I offer my sincere congratulations to the finalists and winners here today. Thank you. Congratulations again, David, and thank you for your support to many of the artists and organization who are represented here today and know that your support has not just come in, in, in the form of a checkbook, but you've also gotten your hands dirty and sat on boards and helped people fill out their tax forms and apply for grants. And a lot of the hard work that keeps the, the, the wheels turning in the art scene here in Newfoundland. And we all appreciate the people like you who help us with that, those efforts. Now, please. We would like to offer a special thanks to the CBC, who are the sponsors of the CBC Emerging Artist Award, which recognizes new and undisputed talent. It is awarded to an emerging artist, arts group, or arts organization that has earned significant recognition for their professional artistic practice. So, please look to the video screen and we'll have a look at this year's finalists. Emily Bridger is a St. John's-based writer, director, and actor whose body of work ranges from dark comedy to drama. Her short films, Epilogue, Brad, Kathy, and Sadie, have been shown on the festival circuit across North America. She's the winner of the RBC Michelle Jackson Award, the William F. White Award for Best Comedy at Lake Shorts International, and Best Newfoundland and Labrador Film at the Nickel Film Festival. Her debut feature film, Little Orphans, was selected for the Whistler Film Festival Praxis Screenwriters Lab in 2017. The film was nominated by the St. John's International Women's Film Festival for Telefilm's Talent to Watch program. Little Orphans was shot in 2019, and Bridger was both a writer and lead actor on the project. Emily Critch is a curator, writer, and artist of Mi'kmaq and settler ancestry from Alemis Duquek to Hamkuk Territory, Bay of Islands. She received her BFA in Visual Arts from Grenfell and is a co-founder of Pulp Gallery. She's done curatorial projects at Concordia University, the Craft Council, and with artist Logan McDonald. She's also worked as curatorial assistant for the Bonavista Biennale, the Rooms Provincial Art Gallery, and the Grenfell Art Gallery. 
Critch has exhibited her own work provincially and internationally, including the Gatehouse Gallery in Harlow, England. She's the recipient of several awards, including the Ellen Rusted Award for Print Media and the Reginald Shepherd and Helen Carson Shepherd Award for Individual Artistic Development. Rachel Cousins is an award-winning singer-songwriter from St. John's. A diverse performer with powerful vocals and a dynamic stage presence, Cousins has performed alongside Canadian icons Serena Ryder, Dave Marsh, Andrew Scott, and Luke McMaster. She released her debut album, This Fire, in 2017. Her single, Let Go, was number two on the Top 100 East Coast Songs in 2018 and received television placements in Winona Earp, Hudson, and The Art of Falling in Love. And the sky is no longer bright. Another song, Arrow of Love, was selected for print with Hal Leonard under the prestigious Henry Lex Creating Artistry series. Cousins released an EP in 2019, and she signed her first publishing deal with Toronto's Simba Publishing. Rachel Cousins has been nominated for Music NL's Female Artist of the Year and Rising Star Awards, and was most recently nominated for an East Coast Music Award for her self-titled EP. So please put your hands together again for this year's Emerging Artist, CBC Emerging Artist Award goes to Emily Bridger. in the middle that was like a polite way to say you weren't gonna win <laughs> oh my gosh <sighs> okay sorry oh thank you um firstly to arts and l for this award um this is really exciting um and also um it, it was just really an honor to be nominated alongside emily and rachel two formidable artists and i really look forward to their work as, as they continue on as artists um, I'd like to thank Arts and Elle also for their support and contribution as I've progressed as a filmmaker over the years, um, from very short to short to very short films, and most recently, um, Little Orphans, uh, my first feature film I've worked on as a screenwriter and lead actor. Um, I received a development grant from for Little Orphans from Arts, Arts and Elle in the early stages of this project, um, something I wasn't and am truly grateful for as I was at the time in the very early stages of, of New Motherhood as well. So. Um, when time and, and its value took on a new meaning. Um, and I have to mention Little Orphans uh, was produced by Jenny Hawley and directed by Ruth Lawrence, two just wonderful partners, collaborators, mentors. Um, and we took the journey together as first time feature filmmakers and, and we feel really fulfilled by the work we made and I certainly wouldn't be here without them. Um, and I'd also, of course, like to thank my family, my parents, and my siblings, and the Bridgers, and the Rose, and the Taylors. They're not here, but I love they're maybe on the computer, um, for your support and your information and for making my life warm and interesting. And my husband, Matthew, and my, my children, John and Elizabeth, for your just endless love. And I have to say to Amelia Harris and, and Lily uh, for taking care of John and Elizabeth while we shot, because I wouldn't be able to do that without them. And to Rhiannon and Martha, who played my sisters in Little Orphans, but are like sisters in real life. And, um, we've worked on a lot of mostly small projects over the years, and I certainly wouldn't be here without them either. Um, it's been a, a tough year, and unpredictable one right from the start, and, and time um, and its value took on a new meaning. Um, during particularly purgatorial moments, it felt like time had no meaning at all. Um, um, I'm privileged in, in a number of ways, and that became clear too, but also um, something that has shone through this extremely challenging year has been um, the importance of arts in, in all its forms. Um, sometimes purely as, as an escape, but overall during this year I felt um, the power of art as a conduit, as a way to connect, um, which has become particularly meaningful during a time when physical human connection is so fraught. Um, so to that end, I, I would like to thank all the artists in this room and, and outside this room, um, you know, on the computer and elsewhere, and who, who continue to do that crucial work uh, to keep us entertained and sometimes uncomfortable, but um, always illuminated and connected. So thank you honor 
Congratulations again, Emily. It's a magnificent honor and well-deserved. This has been a very difficult year for the arts in Newfoundland and Labrador for many reasons. And we saw a number of our creative lights dim within our professional arts community. We're going to take a moment from this awards presentation this afternoon to pause and reflect and celebrate the lives lived of those we've lost over the last year. As artists, we hope our work will last forever. And certainly, uh, we're going to watch this video and reflect on that thought and hope that the, the work that these artists gave us, the creativity that they shared with us, will indeed last forever. Thank you. On a happier note, <laughs> it's hard to come back from that one. Uh, it's time for this year's inductee to the Arts Newfoundland Hall of Honor. This award recognizes a person, group, or organization that has made a distinguished lifetime contribution to the cultural life of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, and it's my honor this year to announce that this year's inductee is the legendary writer Bernice Morgan. Congratulations to this year's inductee to the Hall of Honor, writer Bernice Morgan. Born in St. John's, Newfoundland, Bernice Morgan is best known for her first two novels, Random Passage and its sequel, Waiting for Time. Waiting for Time won the Canadian Authors Award for Fiction and the Thomas H. Riddell Atlantic Fiction Award. Both novels are concerned with Newfoundland's fishery and the depletion of the Atlantic cod. An eight-part television series based on the books was produced in 2001. The Topography of Love, a collection of short stories revolving around life in wartime St. John's, was published in 2000, followed by the novel Cloud of Bone in 2007. Cloud of Bone won both the Newfoundland and Labrador Book Award and the Heritage and History Book Award from the Newfoundland and Labrador Historic Sites Association. It was also shortlisted for the Atlantic Fiction Award. Morgan's latest work, Seasons Before the War, a story of pre-war St. John's from a child's point of view, has been described as a picture book for the old at heart. Morgan was named Artist of the Year by Arts NL in 1995, and in 1998 she was awarded an honorary degree by Memorial University of Newfoundland. Author Bernice Morgan has made an indelible contribution to Newfoundland's literary scene. She's a member of the Order of Canada and received the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal in 2003 and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal in 2012.
Ladies and gentlemen, Bernice Morgan. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank um, the organizations that, or the people who nominated me and the people who put so much work into arranging this. Uh, I can't say how much this means to me. I came without any prepared speech and I was horrified to see that people had speeches. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, being here at the hall especially means a lot to me because it was the musicians and the actors and the writers who performed in the hall who made me know that we had a Newfoundland heritage. When I was born, when I went to school, when I started reading books, it was, you never saw the word Newfoundland unless it was followed by the word dog. You know, it just jumped out of the page at you and there it was. And when I started writing essays in school, you know, I wrote about villages. I didn't say outport because outport was a word that it wasn't right. Village was in all the books I read, all the English books and the English textbooks. So I have to thank so many people, younger than me, but who went before me. You know, the writers and the artists and the actors and the musicians who performed, so many of them performed here. And I am very, very grateful to them and very grateful to a government who sees the value of the arts to business people who see the value of the arts and very, very thankful to the library system that fed me when I, that gave me books and the government continues to fund, thank God. Anyway, thank you all. I am deeply, deeply honored to be standing here. Thank you. And here in Newfoundland, if we were, if we are to enable to maintain the cultural energy that so many of you bring to the table every day of your lives, then it's critical that we always look to the next generation of artists. And so this next award, the Arts and Education Award, recognized an artist who has made an outstanding contribution to arts and education in Newfoundland and Labrador over a period of years. So please, let's take a look at this year's finalists. Joanna Barker is an Innu Mi'kmaq singer, songwriter, and musician from Grand Falls, Windsor, and a member of the Halibu Mi'kmaq First Nation. If it's time that you leave. She studied developmental psychology at St. Evex University and currently works as a music teacher at the Mushwa Innu Natwashish School. There, she volunteers as the after-school theater arts teacher and brought five students to the Labrador Creative Arts Festival this year to perform a play they wrote. She's also facilitated daily after-school music clubs, focus groups, and private lessons. Barker's passion for music, particularly its connection to young people in communities, fuels her drive to go above and beyond in fostering well-being, openness, opportunity, and friendship. She's developed and facilitated camps for youth with the National Arts Center Music Alive program and is programming director at Girls Rock NL and co-director of St. John's Women in Music. Julie Lewis is a St. John's-based award-winning artist, animator, and designer. She studied at Memorial University's Grenfell Campus, Sheridan College, Algonquin College, and Dalhousie University. She devotes most of her time to drawing, teaching, and studying art. As the owner of Sassy Tuna Studio, Lewis brings her enthusiasm and energy to teaching traditional and digital art to youth across the province, providing a customized approach for budding artists to build their creativity. Her emphasis on student-centered art enrichment helps young people prepare their portfolios for illustration and animation and explore the creative powers. Michelle McKinnon is an artist and educator who resides in Corner Brook. McKinnon graduated with a BFA and MFA in visual arts from New York University. She's participated in residencies at the Grenfell Art Gallery, the Banff Center for the Arts, 
the State Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, and Ontario's Sparkbox Studios. An arts educator, she's taught at Memorial, York, and Algoma universities. Her work, largely graphite drawings, capture the intricate details of textile surfaces and corporal fragments. McKinnon's art has been exhibited in galleries across North America and Russia, and she's the two-time recipient of the Elizabeth Greenshields Foundation Grant. So please, we congratulate the winner of this year's Arts and Education Award, Joanna Barker. Hi, Clay. It is 8.20 on Friday night, and I was going to get dressed up and have a nice background, but it's 8.20 on a Friday night. It's time for me to go home. So welcome to my office. Um, Enjoy all the artwork made by my students. Um, it is such an honor to receive this accolade. Thank you, sincerely. Um, it makes me feel kind of shy, but I do have a lot of thank you, so please bear it with me. Um, I'd like to thank, thank um, Kate Lahey, who put my name forward. Kate's my best friend, but um, she's also on the board of directors with me at Girls Rock and L. And we used to run an organization called St. John's Women in Music. And through that organization, we did a lot of uh, teaching together. Um, so thank you, Kate, for your friendship, but also for, for putting my name forward. I would like to thank the Labrador Creative Arts Festival. So in 2017, um, they got me up to do a workshop at the festival with Ramesh Labanathan, and then in 2018, they invited me back to go to Rigolet with Chris Myers to do a week of music camp and lessons. Um, and it was just such an amazing opportunity with such an incredible festival. So thank you so much. Uh, Natasha Harwood at the National Arts Center, she runs the Music Alive program. And Natasha has given me so many opportunities to work within my community. Uh, with Mi'kmaq youth across Mi'kmaq. Um, so Natasha, again, thank you so much for your um, faith in me uh, and the opportunities you provided. I would like to thank my current employer, MTIE. They took a chance on me uh, in the winter of 2019. Uh, and now I'm here and I'm still here <laughs> and I hope to be for a very long time. Uh, so thank you for this opportunity and this absolutely beautiful classroom full of amazing students. I would like to thank all of the music teachers I had growing up. So uh, I'll start with Anne Griffin, who was my piano teacher for 10 years. Um, Anne passed away in 2019, the first week that I got up here to Nat Lashish. Uh, and it was really hard to lose her, especially at such a huge transitional time. But I carry all of her lessons with me and her love of Mozart. And my students know lessons from Anne, whether or not they actually know it or not. Uh, Grace Wong was my violin teacher as a child, uh, and I just ordered a bunch of violins for my school, so I'll be teaching them Mississippi hot dog. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> um, in school, I had Peggy Snellgrove, Bev Jones, Mike Carroll, Mike Snellgrove, and the late Kathleen Brown. And they were all amazing music teachers who left a huge impact on my life. Um, and again, taught me things that I still teach to my students, whether it's about music or kindness. You know, I was very lucky to have such amazing students growing up, uh, amazing teachers growing up in Grand Falls, Windsor. I would like to thank my community, my elders, uh, my family and friends for all of the teachings and storytelling and uh, opportunity to learn from my community about what it means to work in and for uh, my community. So, Willalio, um, there's an Eastern Owl City. Thanks to all my Eastern Owl sisters as well. I'd like to thank my mom and dad for all those private music lessons, uh, but also for making me attend things like concert band and choir when maybe I was a little tired of it. They, they pushed me through. I'm so glad they did. Um, they also encouraged me to take my first students when I was still in high school. Um, 
for a thousand things. Uh, thank you, Mom and Dad. Um, and I guess lastly, I'd like to thank um, my students, and it's super cliche, but I'd like to thank all of them, whether I taught them on the island or in Labrador, PEI, online, uh, whether they were two years old or 75, um, every single one of my students has taught me uh, a really important lesson that I carry with me. Um, in my opinion, you know, what makes a teacher better is the lessons they learn from their students. So thank you to all of my students and the amazing lessons you taught me and helping me become the teacher that I am. Um, so thank you to the NLAC for this, for this huge honor. There are students at my window wanting to come in and play the piano, so I'm going to go do that before I go home. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Ah, well, Valalio, I wish I was there. Congratulations again, Joanne, and to all the finalists. And now to our final presentation of the afternoon, the Artist of the Year Award. This award recognizes the art or activity of an artist, arts group, or arts organization that has made an outstanding contribution to the culture of life of Newfoundland and Labrador in 2019. And to help present this award, I would like to call upon a good friend of mine to step forward and lend his talents once again to the Arts Council. Stan Hill has spent his life making art in Newfoundland and Labrador. As a longtime chair of the Arts Council, has put in countless hours of his own time, plus lending his endless patience and experience to helping other artists bring their creativity to life. So please stand, step forward, and give out this last presentation, the Artist of the Year Award. Thanks, Bob. Um, it's certainly a pleasure to be here this afternoon. I usually have tons of things to say. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have tons today, but I do have a few things that I want to bring forward. Certainly as we celebrate this 35th anniversary of the Newfoundland Habitat Arts Awards, and as well the 40th anniversary of the Council itself, it's a pleasure to be here and present this award. It goes without saying that we're gathering today amidst very unusual circumstances. There's no doubt that COVID-19 has caused uh, countless setbacks in such short period of time. It has changed the way that we work together, the way we live, the way we interact with people not only here in this province, but across the world. We see, uh, we sit here, we sit here, we listen to what's going on. We do have faith that uh, in our scientists and, and, and the community that within the next year, we may return to a normal event. We certainly put off this event for a long time, hoping that we would have some time to gather as a bigger, larger group. But that being said, as I sit there and watch the awards today, there is certainly no less a feeling of the great, great, great accomplishments and the work uh, produced in this province by a wealth of talented people. Uh, it's certainly a pleasure to have uh, presided over this organization in that time period to watch the growth of people, but to watch the successes I've seen, not just here in this province, across the country, across the world. We, we are everywhere. The annual celebration of the arts achievement in our province is taking place Later than usual because of this, because of these events, and we and we appreciate that everybody being patient to get to this point. As far as our arts and L's funding programs, we are uh, certainly happy and uh, obliged to, and grateful to see government's continued support across from the department, but across all the ministers that we've had over the past and the ministers that I've dealt with over the past but the continued support to see a vision and to share our, our goals at Arts NL, to create an environment where artists can thrive, where artists can live and feel comfortable in sharing their talents and producing the work that they produce. This year's $1 million allocation will allow an additional $710,000 to roll out to artists as we adjust the programs and we enhance the programs to make it more sustainable for artists to be able to live in this province and produce the work that they produce. On top of that, there will be an additional $290,000 that has been set aside uh, because uh, because of the lateness of, 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 of the 
budgetary re release, which we appreciate and we understand fully the time it takes to do that. But that money will be set aside for two new programs that ArtsNL is developing, which you'll hear about soon. Um, we are very excited about them and it opens up the door for, to professional artists who have not yet or may have had uh, not trouble, but uh, just the complications are just uh, not accessing the uh, support programs that ArtsNL offers. So we look forward to that coming up. These times are certainly strange and are undoubtedly difficult, but ArtsNL has continued to fulfill its mandate to foster and promote the creation of arts for the benefit of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, but as well, we do create for the larger world that comes to visit us. And we, we, we appreciate the uh, additional support from government through the COVID-19 support program administered through hospitality. We think that will be another big benefit for artists to, to sustain themselves as we go through this, uh, as th this pandemic and that we work forward to a goal where we will gather again and that we will have uh, more freedom of movement in the future. As well, I would like to thank the steering committee, Barbara Dorn, Todd Hennessy, and of course, Bob Hallett and an extra nod for Bob for hosting our events tonight. We certainly thank you for that. But uh, that group and committee has been work, worked hard and tirelessly to come up with this event. Uh, and we had, being that they were such celebration years, we did have big events planned, but we're living in this time. So we adapted and we moved forward. Lastly, I just want to say that this is my probably my last, uh, uh, my last official event as chair of the Flint Library Arts Council. I have been here for I don't know how many years, but I think it's like seven years now. I've been in the chair's position and maybe eight years in council. It's, it's as it has gone quickly. It has been it has been uh, been an interesting interesting time. But we have faced you know Arts and has faced a lot of challenges in the past, but working together and with collaboration, um, with collaboration consultation with the community, we have moved forward and. We have now, and with certainly with the support of government and a sharing of our vision, we have moved to a place where uh, probably what is beyond what we had dreamt could be possible. So thank the government for that. And thank for the community. The community uh, the community rose up to support Arts and L. And I thank all the artistic members of this community for doing that because it makes, uh, it gives us drive to do what we do. But without that community uh, support, and consultation and working as a team. No one makes things happen on their own. It, it always happens with collaboration and work. So enough of me, enough of the Arts Council. We're here to, art, to offer the Artist of the Year Award. And let's have a look at the presentations. Megan Gale Cole's debut novel, Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club, was published in 2019 by House of Anansi Press. The Globe and Mail called the book a dark, taut, funny novel that feels for its character's pain while remaining caustic toward the enablers and the kinds of violence that polite society allows. Small Game Hunting was shortlisted for the Scotiabank Giller Prize, chosen as one of five CBC Canada Reads books and was awarded the 2019 BMO Winterset Award. Megan Gale Coles is currently doing a PhD in interdisciplinary studies at Concordia University. In 2019, Philippa Jones interactive exhibit Suspended was installed at the Rooms Provincial Art Gallery and later the Confederation Center for the Arts in Charlottetown. Suspended represented years of work. It included large paintings, drawings, interactive technology, and a sculpture of suspended orbs. The work played with perceptions of time and invited viewers to reflect upon their personal ideas of loss. In 2019, Jones was also longlisted for the Sobe Art Award. Philippa Jones is the executive director of Eastern Edge Gallery and a board member for the Atlantic Provinces Art Gallery Association. <laughs> 2019 saw Opera on the Avalon continuing to push the boundaries of opera with diverse and innovative programming. Sean and Dithit, a partnership with Tapestry Opera, made its debut, and opera critic John Giltz called it an accomplished piece that raises questions about how we perceive and transmit our stories. 
Uta mounted the Andrew Lloyd Webber classic Phantom of the Opera, and they partnered with Toronto's Mervish Productions in 2019 to bring a concert version of Come From Away to St. John's. Proceeds were donated to Central Newfoundland communities, as well as the Autism Society of Newfoundland and Labrador and the Community Food Sharing Association. And the winner is Megan Gale Coles. Newfoundland Labrador Arts and Culture Community that supports and holds me accountable in my work, makes me strive to do better each time I write something new. I would also like to thank uh, my friends and family who put up with my antics during the creation period, which can sometimes be taxing for everyone. And I would especially like to thank uh, the great northern peninsula of the island of Newfoundland, who uh, is responsible for my best and bad bits, uh, whether they want to uh, really acknowledge that sometimes or not. Um, all the funders and congrats to all the nominees. And I think we've been in this little room long enough. So thank you very much and have a great day. Well, I'll offer one more congratulation to all our finalists, winners, and inductees. A special thanks to the staff here at the LSBU Hall for opening the doors of this theater again for us this afternoon. Thanks to Angela Antle and the staff at CBC Newfoundland and Labrador for creating these uh, wonderful videos this afternoon. And finally, the staff of the Newfoundland Arts NL and the Newfoundland and Labrador Arts Council, who worked very hard throughout the year under the, under the guidance of Reg Windsor and many, many volunteers and staff there who've Make sure that all our artists get a chance to make the work they want and get a chance to be creative and get a chance to live the lives and art that so many of us aspire to. So thank you all for coming this afternoon, and hopefully next year we'll all get together again. Good day. In two, three. <laughs> Thank you.